In a classification model, we need to predict which class out of a discrete set the input belongs to. And in the video on softmax re regression, we actually had a look at how we can represent this type of categorical output. So we're taking in an X and we need to predict a Y. And when we're building the algorithm, we need to represent Y in some way. And in the softmax regression video, we briefly looked at using one odd vectors to encode that categorical output. What can we do when we have input features, which are also categorical or discrete in some way, coming from a finite set of categories? In this video, we will look at representing the input as one odd vectors as well. So let's quickly start by recapping what we looked at in the softmax regression video. And again, I'm using softmax regression here, but a similar idea can be used for any type of model when you're going to implement the cl a classifier. So in multi-class classification, we have categorical output. That means that our output label corresponds to one of capital K distinct classes. Uh, one way, if you're going to implement a softmax regression, is to just save these class numbers in some um, array and then just keep track of what class a specific input belongs to. And then you're basically just, you can think of it as just implementing the loss function directly where you have this indicator, which indicates which class the nth training item comes from. The alternative, instead of just storing these values, you know, um, input one belongs to class two, input five belongs to class 25 and so on, instead of explicitly encoding these indices for the different classes, what we can do is we can use something called the one hot vector. A one hot vector is a vector of all zeros, apart from the dimension corresponding to the class that this input belongs to. So if you have a one at a dimension little k, then it means that the nth training item is uh, belongs to class little k. So if this thing belonged to the first class, then we would have a zero here and we would have a one here. If it belonged to the second class, then we would have a zero there as well. And then we would have a one there. Now, if we do this, then we can write the softmax regression loss in this way, where instead of having this indicator, we just have this y k n, and this basically cuts out the kth dimension of our one out vectors. So this means that this value here will be one if xn belongs to class k, otherwise it will be zero if xn doesn't belong to class k. So it's basically just a shorthand way of writing the indicator function. Now it's important to note here that whether you're saving the target output as the index of the class, or and then basically using this indicator function, or if you're using this one hot um, representation, these two things are mathematically equivalent. Whether you're going to implement this or this, they're exactly the same, irrespective of how you encode the target output. It might make more sense to use one hot representations in terms of the actual implementation. It might be easier because then you can maybe ve vectorize your algorithm, but the result that you get is going to be exactly the same. The score for your loss, whether you're doing um, indices or whether you're doing one hot encodings, are exactly the same. What we're going to see now is that that is not always the case, especially if you're going to look at how you can encode categorical inputs, um, basically input features, then it can be quite important um, how you encode your data. So let's look at an example of categorical input. This is also sometimes called discrete input features or qualitative input features. So as an example, someone's occupation might be that they're a student, a lecturer, or an artist. And this could be an input feature to a model that might want to uh, predict someone's salary, for example, based on multiple features of which occupation is one. Now we can't put into a linear regression model, we can't put in student, lecturer, or artist just directly. So we need to encode this feature in some way. One option is maybe to create a new feature, um, we'll call it x, and x, we encode it in this way that x takes on the value zero if the occupation is student, 
one if the occupation is lecturer and two if the occupation is artist. And if you do this, then you can easily train your linear regression model on um, taking in X and maybe some other features as well, and then predicting the person's salary. The problem with this approach, if you're using this numerical encoding of the different distinct input classes, is that very often this implies some ordering of your data. So if you're training a linear regression model, then what we're going to do is we're going to weigh this input feature in some way with some W. And then depending on W times X, we're going to make some prediction on the salary. And that actually implies implicitly that some of your inputs are closer to the others. So for example, um, student and lecturer are closer together than student and artist in this encoding because a student is at zero, a lecturer is one and an artist is at two. Just think of this a little bit more uh, concretely. You're basically defining a new X axis here where here we're at zero and that's student. Here we're at lecturer and that's one and here we're at artist, that's two. And if we have an uh, input that's at one, then that's closer to zero than it is uh, to two. So if we're going to fit some linear regression model here, then this implies that the salary of the lecturer will always be closer to the salary of the student than the student salary to the artist, right? And that doesn't matter if I make a different prediction here, let's say, we make the prediction going there, same thing. The, we're basically implying that artist is further away from student than artist is from lecturer. And this might not be true, right? Um, we don't know beforehand whether, you know, lecturer is closer to a student than to an artist. We don't know this. And th that's actually something we would want the model to decide. So and an alternative um, for this type of categorical input is to use a one out vector again. So what we will do is we will define a new feature vector X, which is also a one out vector. So it would be, for example, if it's this, then that would represent a lecturer. Okay. Uh, if the one is in this position here and we've got a zero here, then that would be a student. And if we've got a one in the last position, then that would be an artist. Now you can maybe scribble this out for yourself a little bit, um, maybe with linear regression, but you will see that this type of representation doesn't imply an imp implicit ordering of your input um, types. So sometimes one out vectors is also called a one of K encoding. So here we K would be um, a three. So it's a one of three encoding. Um, and sometimes the resulting vector X is called a dummy variable. It's not, you know, the exact class input, we basically encoded that into some dummy form. Now it's important here that when we looked at categorical output for the softmax regression model, for instance, it didn't matter whether we're, we were representing the target output as a one out vector or storing the indices of the specific class. But here it does matter when we're dealing with categorical input, if I'm encoding my inputs in this way, then that's completely different from encoding my inputs in this way. Now, this might not always be the case. It depends a little bit on the particular model that you're going to use. Um, but it's important to think through how you're going to encode it without just naively quickly encoding the, the data when you're loading it in and when you're pre-processing it. It's important to think, what is my model actually going to do with this input feature? If I'm going to weigh my feature in some way, then you can't encode my input in this way because if I'm going to weigh it in some way, then that implies this implicit ordering. So then I need this type of representation and then a multiple linear regression model on top of that.